we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Look at these words. Let us throw off everything that hinders. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. How many of you guys know that you and I have a race that has been marked out for us? You have a race to run. I have a race to run. Jesus said we, are, we have been made on purpose for a purpose. We have a job to do. We have a life to live out. We have a walk to walk out. You have a race to run. And God wants us to learn to, to, to persevere in that race with freedom. Without, without weights dragging us down. And he said, let us run that race that is marked out for us. And look at these words, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. The pioneer or the author and perfecter or completer of our faith. So I want to really just challenge us as we continue in this uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting. As we go into week number two, I want to challenge us not, not only... To throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. But today, I want you to hear this, this next part. okay? Because this, these next few words are the key. These next, this next verse is, 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 holds the treasure. It's the answer. If you're struggling with a lot of baggage and you've got a lot of weight ba- b- just, just uh, uh, bogging you down in your race... These next few verses are, this next verse is so important. I want to draw your attention to this. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let's look at it again. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now, underline, circle, bold, highlight, whatever you want to do, these next few words. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. I want you to hear that this morning. Fix your eyes on on Jesus, near and perfecter of faith. Listen to me. To run our race effectively. To run our race effectively, we must throw off everything that hinders. And we must keep our eye on the goal. What is the goal? We must be focused on the person of Jesus Christ. Okay, fix our eyes on Jesus. This this is talking about this is talking about looking away from certain things, looking away from those things that may distract us, looking away from those things that may tempt us, looking away from those false beliefs about ourselves, about God. No, and looking to and putting all of our focus on, putting all of our attention on. The person of Jesus Christ. In other words, we need to have eyes for no one else except for Jesus Christ. We don't need to be looking here and there and on, on, uh, for, to Hollywood or this culture or anything like that. No, we have eyes for one. We have a singular purpose. We have a singular heart. There's no mixture. No, it is pure. We are looking unto Jesus. Come on, everybody. Say, looking unto Jesus, the the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Jesus is the originator or the founder or the author, the leader, the pathfinder of our faith. Think about this with me, who Jesus is. He's the perfecter of our faith. He's gone before us as, he, as the trailblazer, and he's already completed the course. And he works all things together for our good. Jesus alone grows our faith. Jesus strengthens our faith. So Jesus is the source. He's the origin of our faith. He's the origin of, of the Christian faith within every believer. He initiates it, and he sustains it. All the way through, and then he completes it, or he finishes it. That's why one of my favorite scriptures 
my life verse it comes from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. This verse has spoken to me over and over throughout my life. But in that verse, Paul the Apostle says this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in me, in you, will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So he started it. He started that good work in us, and he is working now, and he will bring it to pass every step of the way. It is Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith. So God calls us, keep your eyes on him. You want to be free from baggage? You want to be free from the sin that so easily entangles you? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen? Okay, I want you to look at these scriptures because I want to ask you a question. And, the, and because, of this, because of this great truth that we need to keep our eyes on him, I have to ask you. I'm forced to ask you as a congregation, as my brothers and sisters, where is your attention? What are you looking at? What are you focused on? What do you think about the most? Where's your gaze in your life? Think about this as we read these scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Paul says something powerful. He says, so we fix our eyes. Underline those words. Fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. See, since what is seen is what? Temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. In other words, Paul's telling us it's important what you're looking at. Don't look at your problems. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't fix your gaze there. Fix your gaze upon what is unseen. The one who is eternal. Fix your eyes upon him. Look at what else it says in, over in Hebrews chapter 3. It says this, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, that's you and me, who share in the heavenly calling. Look at these words. Underline this. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. Fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and our high priest. So what are we thinking about? What are our thoughts? I always tell my, tell my kids, tell my wife, and remind myself, it's important to think about what you think about. Don't let your thoughts just roam around wherever they want to go. No, the Bible says take every thought captive. Right? Think about what you are thinking about. Because the Bible says if you want to live free, if you want to travel light, you need to fix your thoughts upon Jesus Christ. Look at this in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace. Anybody want to experience and live in perfect peace? Okay, I do too. Look at what it says. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Underline those words. Whose mind is stayed on you. On you because he trusts in you. Your mind is not tossed to and fro. Your mind is stayed. This is the key. Your mind is fixed. Your mind is wholeheartedly committed to staying on Jesus Christ. Look at over at Philippians chapter 4. I just want you to be encouraged by these scriptures here. It says this. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present all your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will do what? It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, instead of carrying around baggage instead of worrying about everything. No, he says, replace that anxiety, replace those cares with prayer. 
And what is prayer? It's fixing our eyes on God. It's fixing our minds on our Lord and our Savior. He says, don't, don't be anxious for anything, but pray about every situation. You want to live free? You want to travel light? Let's fix our eyes, fix our minds, and let's be people who commit themselves to prayer. Amen? Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. I love this. It's so simple, yet so profound. It says, look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. It's almost like, have you seen those race horses? You've seen the Kentucky Derby? You see, what do they have around their eyes, right? It's like this. We need spiritual, uh, 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 what are they called? Blinders. Blinders spiritual blinders. Okay, we're not going to look this way. We're not going to be distracted by this. We're not going to be tempted or distracted to go off course by, by, by this. No, we're going to fix our eyes on straight ahead because straight ahead is the goal. Straight ahead is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Okay. Let me give you this and jot this down. Focus on Jesus, not your problems. Focus on him. Guys, this is the core of this message. This is an easy, simple message today. It was not so easy to apply it to your lives, but this is the point right here. Focus on Jesus, not your problems. You look at what is unseen. You look at eternity. You focus on Jesus and your problems get smaller. Do you ever notice that before? Sometimes when I'm just going through the stuff of life and I just want to take some time. I'm, I know I'm off. I'm feeling like I'm sinking. I'm feeling overwhelmed. But when I get to a place where I shut the door and I begin to pray and I begin to worship and I begin to think about how big my God is. And I begin to magnify him. Guess what happens to my problems? They shrink. They shrink. Because sometimes it's like your problems right here. Stuck in front of your face. But you begin to worship. You begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Like what, like what we were doing earlier today. And your problem goes like this. And your God gets huge. And you're like, yeah, good. Jesus is awesome. His name is powerful. His name is wonderful. We lift him up and our issues and our baggages, they fade into the ground. Kind of like my voice right there. <clears throat> Number two, it's okay. Number two is listen to Jesus, not your feelings. Jot that down if you're taking notes. Man, your feelings will lie to you. You cannot trust your feelings. You cannot do what you just feel like doing. No, you listen to one voice, and that is the voice of your master, Jesus Christ. You listen to him and not your feelings. You want to be free from your baggage? You want to learn to travel light? Then you listen primarily to that one voice. And he says, my sheep know my voice. And the voice of another, they will not follow. Open your spiritual ears to hear the voice of Jesus and pursue him. The third thing is this. Rely on Jesus, not your own strength. Rely on his power. Rely on his resources. Rely on his wisdom, not your own I just want to encourage you, as you continue to run your race, as you continue to walk out your purpose in Christ, I want, you to know, I want to tell you this, refuse to focus on what you are not. Refuse to focus on what you cannot do. Refuse to focus on, on what you do not know. Instead, focus on God's power. Instead, focus on his resources. Instead, focus on his ways. Focus on Christ in you, the hope of glory. Listen to Jesus. Rely upon Jesus. Look to Jesus. Focus 
your eyes and all of your attention on Jesus. Because when you do, when you focus your eyes upon Jesus, what do you see? You see, you see a perspective that is changed completely. I made a list just this, just this past week, and I asked myself that question. When I focus on Jesus, what do I see? Because I wanted to explain this to you. Now listen, when we focus on him, we see the alpha and the omega. We see the beginning and the end. We see the author and the finisher. Of our faith. When we focus on Him, we see the Creator of the universe who holds it all together, the one who always was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. When we focus on Him, we see the one who is unmoved. We see the one who is unchanging, who is undefeated, who is never, who is never outdone. Now, when we focus on Jesus, we see that He was bruised. And he was whipped so that we could experience healing. He was pierced so that that our pain might be eased. He died so that we might live. He fought a battle against darkness so that I could have peace. You see, when we think about Jesus, we fix our eyes upon him. We realize that the world cannot understand him. We realize that armies cannot defeat him. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. The schools cannot explain him. Can you help me preach this this morning? The leaders cannot ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him, right? The Pharisees couldn't trap him. Nero couldn't crush him. Uh, The new age can't replace him. The History Channel cannot explain him. (laughs) He is the light. He is love. He is the Lord. When we look at Jesus, what do we see? We see his goodness. We see his kindness. We see his gentleness. We see that he is God. We see that he's holy. That he's righteous, that he's powerful, that he's pure. We see that everything he does is perfect. Every word that he says is true. He is unchanging. The Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's my redeemer. He's my savior. He's my guide. He's my peace. He's my joy. He's my comfort. He is my hope. Man, I thought I'd get a bigger amen than that. Come on. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Brian, that was good preaching right there. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> I serve him because I love him. And because he loves me. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. He gives me life. And that more abundantly. He is all powerful. He is all-knowing. He is everywhere all the time. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He will never mislead me. He will never forget me. This is Jesus. This is what we see when we look to him, when we fix our eyes upon him. When I fall, what happens? He picks me up. When I fail... When I blow it, he forgives me and he restores me. When I'm weak, he is strong. When I'm lost, he shows me the way. When I'm afraid, he stands by my side. When I'm hurt, he heals me. When I'm broken, what does he do? He mends me. When when I'm confused, he leads me. When I'm hungry, he feeds me. And when I have problems, he solves them. So if you really want to know the truth about how to deal with the baggage in your life, I don't have anything really complicated or is really smart to tell you other than this. Fix your eyes upon Jesus Christ. Fix your mind upon him and stay there. Put your full attention upon Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of your faith. Now, I want to give you just a a, a biblical illustration of this. 
okay? If you have your Bibles or in your message note, it's up on the screen too. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Let's talk about Peter. <clears throat> Remember Peter walked on the water? <clears throat> Matthew 14, it says this. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves Because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Okay, I want you to see some lessons in this particular story as it relates to fixing our eyes upon Jesus. Number one is this. If Jesus asks you to do it, you can do it. If he's the one asking you to do it, you can do it. The Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. You might feel afraid. You might feel scared. You might feel unsure. You might feel some kind of anxiety. But take these words as your motto. Do it afraid. If Jesus said it, You can do it. Do it afraid. Don't let your feelings lead the way. Don't let your fear call the shots. Jesus' voice leads the way. And if he tells you to do something, he leads you in a certain way, you can absolutely do it. But you can't do it by yourself. You have to be dependent upon his strength. How many of you know that when Jesus tells you to do something, it's not so that you can do it alone. He strengthens you. He empowers you to do it. He guides you. When he calls you to do something, he calls you to dependence, not independently from him. You stay close to him. You stay reliant on him, and you can absolutely do it. As soon as you start walking in obedience, now think about this story. Think about Peter. As soon as you start walking in that obedience, you will find out about God's miraculous provisions. You will find out about his miraculous resources. And you will find out about his power. So let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you stepped out in faith to obey the Lord? I committed to the Lord a long time ago that my answer, as as difficult as situation may be, as difficult as what he's asking me to do may be, my answer is just going to be, yes, Lord. I'm sold out to that. I'm surrendered to that. If he asks me, he calls me, he prompts me, he speaks to me and says, do this, say that, go to this person, do this, do that. My answer is not argument. My answer is not delay. My answer is not procrastination. My answer is not excuses. My answer is, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's keep reading. Matthew 14, verse uh, 29. Look what happened. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. Wow, what, a, what an incredible verse and what an incredible moment that was. Peter got down out of the boat 
In other words, he got out of his comfort zone. He got out of his security because he was obeying the word of Jesus. And it wasn't like he was walking on the, he, he was walking on the water, but you know what he was really walking on? The word of God. He was, walk, he was walking on that word, come. Jesus said, come. Peter said, okay, if I can walk on anything, it's going to be that word right there. When he speaks, I'm going to walk. And we see in this moment right here, he gets out of the boat. He walks on the water. And he walks out to Jesus. So number two, if you want to do what Jesus called you to do, you're going to have to get out of the boat. You love me, don't you? Okay, I love you too. But we're going to have to take action. We're going to have to do something that may be a little uncomfortable for us. It's going to draw us out of our comfort zones and our security. Sometimes when you, when you listen to God and you discern what you are truly supposed to do, it's going to scare you half to death. It's going to be a scary, scra- uh, uh, scary crazy step that you're going to have to take. It may be relocating your family to start a new church or to engage in some ministry or to, or to obey God. It, it may just be having a really difficult conversation with somebody. It may be just having to admit your own uh, involvement, your own sin in a situation and take some responsibility for your own baggage. Hello. Maybe it may be that you have to forgive someone who you don't think deserves it. And maybe you have to forgive yourself for something that you think you've done that is unforgivable. It's not. Maybe you have to cut up your credit cards. Hello. Maybe you have to cut up your credit cards or sell your house or, or downgrade your car. I don't know. Maybe you have to make some kind of lifestyle change that Jesus says it's time to do. Whatever it is, it's probably not going to be easy. It's probably going to feel scary. I had a pastor one time. In fact, it was Mike Chapman, the guy who's coming to do our marriage seminar. He said, he said this. He taught us this one time. He said, faith will initially feel a lot like fear. But you don't, you do not let that fear call the shots. No, it says, the the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody say amen. Amen. Okay. So, we look at this story We look at Peter, we look at Jesus, and we have to say, okay, Jesus, if you if you tell me to do something, yes, Lord, I'll do it. I don't know how this will work. It seems to defy all logic. But if Jesus told me to do it, I'm going to step out and I'm going to do it. And the next thing you know, just like Peter experienced, the next thing you know, you will be experiencing the supernatural workings of God in your life. God will give you a peace that you didn't think you could have. He will supply every need that you have. You will see God working in ways in your life that you never thought would be possible. That storm around you may still be raging, but now you will be able to stand in spite of it. So back to the story. There's Peter defying all logic logic, and looking into the eyes of Jesus. Think about this. His eyes were fixed on Jesus. His mind was locked in. He was sold out to obeying Jesus and keeping his, his eyes and his thoughts and his mind upon Jesus. Everything around him was swirling. But he kept his eyes there, and as long as his eyes were there, he was able to walk on the water. But then he ran into a big butt. Anybody ever ran into a big butt before? Okay. B-U-T. Okay? (laughs) Just want to clarify that. (laughs) 
Peter's about to run into a big B-U-T. Okay? Verse 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. So write this down if you're taking, taking notes with me. Number three, when you focus on the winds and the waves, you will sink. You'll get overwhelmed. Your focus begins to shift onto your circumstances, onto what you think is reality, and you will begin to sink. Let me ask you these questions. What do you spend your time thinking about? What's your mind on? When you wake up in the morning, do you immediately go through all these things standing against you today? You look at your problems. You look at your to-do list. You look at your, the pile of laundry. You look at that angry boss. You look at the impossible deadlines. You look at the sadness that may be in your house or the inevitable conflict that is waiting for you that day? Or do you focus on the one who has called you to step out? Do you keep your eyes upon the one who has promised to be with you every, every step of the way and to support you, to hold you up with his righteous right hand? Where is your focus? And is it shifting when that big butt comes to your life. Let's keep going. <laughs> Just going to leave that alone. <laughs> Verse 31 says this. Immediately, look what happened. Look what happened. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why do you doubt? Why do you doubt? Number four is this. When you focus on Jesus, you will rise in faith. And your faith will take you higher. Your faith will get stronger. You'll be able to believe God like you've never believed him before. And as I was praying about this, I felt like many of us here were going to be entering into a season where if we will keep our eyes on Jesus, you will have the ability to believe God for the miraculous in your life. For the miraculous in your family. For the miraculous in, when it comes to your provisions. To the miraculous, you're going to be able to believe him for healing. Not only for yourself, but for other people. When you keep your eyes upon Jesus, you're going to be able to believe him for the supernatural things in, for your life and for the lives of those that you will encounter. But what's the key? Fix your eyes upon the Lord and you will rise in faith. Verse 33 says this, and when they climbed, Jesus and Peter, when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who are in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. So listen, number five is this. Others will take notice, and Jesus will be glorified. When you keep your eyes upon Jesus, even in the most difficult of circumstances, even in the most heartbreaking of losses, even in the most challenging things that you might face, if you will keep your eyes on Jesus, that will speak life and it will speak a witness about how great Jesus really is. In other words, people will notice. The people around you, they will notice. Why does she have so much peace? Why is he able to go through this horrible situation with so much love and forgiveness in his heart? It will evoke curiosity, and they will see how great God is in your life, and Jesus will be magnified. 
He will be glorified if you will keep your eyes on the goal, on Jesus Christ. So no matter what we go through, no matter what baggage that we have to deal with in this life, no matter how tough things may get, God will use your life to positively and eternally impact the lives of other people as we keep our eyes on him. Amen? I'm going to read you this uh, verse um, by Joyce Meyer. Man, anybody know who Joyce Meyer is? Okay, not all TV preachers are bad. She's good. I like her. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. Then I want to go ahead and invite the worship team up as we close today. But it says this. The more you trust Jesus and keep your eyes focused on him, the more life you'll have. Trusting God brings life. Believing brings rest. Anybody need life? Anybody need rest? Trust and believe. She goes on to say, stop trying to figure everything out and let God be God in your life. You're not the fourth member of the Trinity. <laughs> right? It's not the Father, the Son, and Pastor Brian, okay? It's not the Father, the Son, and you fill in your name. No. Let God be God. He's good, and he knows what's going on in your life. And you know what? You can trust him. You can believe him. He's faithful as you keep your eyes fixed on him. Would you stand with me, please? So listen, perhaps you're going through a terrible storm right now in your life, kind of like Peter was experiencing in this story that we read today. Maybe you feel like things are way above your head, way more than your pay grade. And you're, downing, you're drowning in what can really be hopelessness. And you seem to be drowning in just desperation and perhaps the, the baggage in our lives just keeps wearing you down. And maybe you've tried everything that you know to try. And you've exhausted all of your resources. Yet it seems that your situation hasn't gotten any better. Let me ask you just a few tough questions if I can. Okay? I want you to just listen. Go ahead and close your eyes. Listen in the presence of the Lord. Is it possible the reason that you have this sinking feeling is because you're focusing more attention on your situation than your Savior? Is it possible the reason that you have been that you have this sinking feeling is because you've been you spent more time talking to people about your problem? than you have spent in prayer talking to God. If Jesus were here right now in the flesh and he at this very moment would say to you, would he say to you, oh, you of strong faith? Or would he say to you, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Why do you doubt? 